After every single Islamist terror attack, we're subjected to the same BS by the media and the regressive left. This is just a tiny minority of radical extremists. This has nothing to do with Islam. <laughs> There's no such thing as moderate Islam. Islam is a violent, intolerant religion, which in its current form has no place whatsoever in liberal Western democracies. Note how soccer fans in England impeccably observed a minute's silence in honor of the victims of the Paris massacre. Now see how fans in Turkey, which is 99% Muslim, behaved during that minute's silence. Same thing in Azerbaijan, which is 95% Muslim. Booing, jeering, chants of Allah Akbar throughout the whole stadium during a minute's silence for the victims of ISIS jihadists. Is this still just a tiny minority? Now let's look at the polls. A poll conducted by ICM found that 16% of French citizens, the vast majority of them Muslim, support ISIS. Amongst young people aged 18 to 24, 27% of them support ISIS. ISIS. That's prime recruitment age. A survey conducted by Al Jazeera Arabic Television, whose audience mainly consists of Sunni Muslims living in the Arab world, found that 81% of respondents supported ISIS. Are we still going to pretend that this is just a tiny minority? A poll by the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies found that even 13% of Syrian refugees who were supposedly fleeing from ISIS had a positive view of ISIS. And hundreds of thousands of them are pouring into the West, including some of the terrorists involved in the Paris massacre. Let's look at some more polls. The vast majority of Muslims in Africa, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and South Asia support making Sharia law the law of the land. The clear majority of Muslims in South Asia and the Middle East support stoning women to death for the crime of adultery. Similar numbers support the death penalty for people who abandon the Muslim faith. A clear majority of Muslims support these violent and intolerant beliefs. How in any way is that moderate? Even in America, nearly a quarter of Muslims believe that violence is a legitimate response against those who offend Islam or portray the Prophet Muhammad. Is that a tiny minority of radicals? A BBC survey found that over a quarter of British Muslims had sympathy for the Charlie Hebdo jihadists. There are twice as many British Muslims fighting for ISIS than there are fighting for the British army. And where are the voices of moderate Islam? Where are the protests against ISIS by thousands of moderate Muslims? After the Charlie Hebdo attack, we did see thousands of Pakistani Muslims take to the streets to protest against Charlie Hebdo and in support of the jihadists who slaughtered the cartoonists. Now watch this clip, where self-proclaimed moderate Muslims vehemently agree with the most violent and intolerant parts of the Quran. Everyone in the room, how many of you are normal Muslims? You're not extremists, you're not radical. This is normal Sunni Muslims. Please raise your hands. Everybody, mashaAllah, subhanAllah. Okay, take down your hands again. How many of you agree that men and women should sit separate? Please raise your hands. Everyone agree. Everyone agree. Brothers and sisters. Subhanallah. So, so it's not just these radical sheikhs then. Allahu Akbar. Next question. How many of you agree that the punishments described in the Quran and the Sunnah, whether it is death, whether it is stoning for adultery, whatever it is, if it is from Allah and His Messenger, that is the best punishment ever possible for humankind and that is what we should apply in the world well, who, who agrees with that 
Allahu Akbar. Stoning women for adultery, executing rape victims, homophobia, segregation, all beliefs held by people who describe themselves as moderate Muslims. And of course, not every Muslim is going to strap on an AK-47 and gun down innocent people. But the notion of moderate Islam is a complete myth. By its very nature, Islam is an intolerant, radical, extremist belief system. I think the biggest misconception is that Islam is a religion of peace. Islam, of the three monotheistic religions, it's the youngest. It is not a religion of peace because it's unreformed. The problem is not radical Islam. The problem is just Islam. And while feminists whine about a college rape culture that doesn't exist, we're importing a real rape culture into the West via the migrant wave. Every single week I cover stories about migrants raping women and children in European countries and getting away with lenient sentences. Look at countries like Sweden, whose rape cases have soared 1400% since they opened the doors to mass immigration. We have Muslim gang rape scandals in the UK on a routine basis, with authorities covering them up for fear of being labelled politically incorrect. Rotherham, Oxford, Manchester, Rochdale, the list goes on and on. The most common name for a gang rapist in the UK is Mohammed. The majority of child rape and gang molestation convictions are handed out to Muslims. This isn't the aberrant behaviour of a tiny minority. This is the culture of Islam. This is the culture that US soldiers have been told to ignore because it's so common in Afghanistan. And where are the voices of the so-called progressive left? As Michel Welbeck says, on the level of what we customarily call values, Muslims have more in common with the extreme right than the extreme left. Homosexuality, women's rights, secular democracy versus theocracy. So why are liberals only comfortable in opposing the extreme right and not Islam when it comes to these values. Why are liberals happy to ignore or defend violent intolerance when it's espoused under the banner of Islam? Liberals embrace multiculturalism as a form of tolerance. Tolerance of what? Segregation, honor killings, female genital mutilation, homophobia, Sharia law. Listen, ISIS attacked Paris because in their own words, they said it represented a centre of prostitution and vice. This isn't a misinterpretation of Islam. It's a directive taken straight from the Quran. Quote, The penalty for those who strive upon earth to cause corruption is that they be killed or crucified. That's directly from the Quran. That motive isn't derived from radical Islam or a misinterpretation of the Quran. It's derived from Islam itself, directly from the same book read, preached, and practiced by 1.5 billion Muslims. Until we acknowledge that Islam is a retrograde 7th century religion, which like Christianity in the 1500s, needs a massive reformation if it's to be compatible with Western liberal democracies, the toxic ideology that drives ISIS will never be defeated. There's nothing you can do or any other non-Muslim can do to tweak the theology. That is going to come from Muslims. But what we can do is we can catalyze that. We can give those who want to tweak the theology hope that it is a worthy investment. A worthy investment of, because these people are risking their lives, the lives of their children. They're risking their livelihoods. And you're going to say it's a worthy investment. It's going to make the world better for Muslims and non-Muslims in the next generation. No matter how many boots on the ground in Syria, no matter how many cruise missiles you launch, the underlying doctrine of violent, intolerant hatred will remain unmoved. And until leftists and so-called progressives grow a spine and stop making apologies for the most fanatical and regressive belief system on the planet, the cycle of violence will never be checked. The problem is not radical Islam. The problem is just Islam.